Best seen from little earthquakes. Exterior, Motel parking lot later that night. Troy and Casey exit the hotel, arm in arm, are nonchalantly crossing the parking lot. There are still many cars scattered around, but no other people at this time. The sound of traffic on the nearby road is clearly audible. You know, we didn't even have a dance. We've been dancing for at least an hour. No, I mean, you and me. Slow one. They arrive at their car. Casey looks at Troy and extends his hand. Troy is confused. Here? Are you serious? Casey reaches in his coat pocket and pulls out his phone and plays a song. He again extends his hand. Troy takes it and pulls him in tight to his chest. They begin dancing slowly. It's a very romantic yet unusual scene as two large muscular guys in suits slow dance in a parking lot. Troy pushes back from Casey a bit, looking in his eyes, then they kiss softly. But the moment is interrupted by a man's voice. Hey! They pull away from each other. Troy immediately husks up. Casey grasps on more firmly to Troy's arm and they look to see who it is. They are alarmed, but don't appear frightened. What do you want? The man takes a step forward and it becomes clear it's Maggie's fiance. Maggie is standing behind him. All four people are just a few yards apart. We don't want any trouble. She just wants to talk to Troy. I think she said enough already. Uh, Troy, can I please just talk to you just for a minute? Troy looks at Casey. Casey is obviously skeptical. Nolan isn't going to do anything. Casey releases his grip on Troy's arm. Troy takes a few steps forward and Maggie steps to the side of Nolan. She then walks toward the back of the SUV. Troy follows. Casey takes a step or two closer facing Nolan. They just stare at each other. Thanks. We didn't mean to startle you. So, earlier, the way I acted was out of line. Have you been standing out here for two hours to tell me that? No. Actually, we left and had a drink. I was pissed, but I also realized how I probably came across. So we came back. I owe you an apology for that. Troy is not one of but acquiesces. Well, thank you. That's very big of you. He nods, pauses, and then begins to walk away. Please don't walk away again. Troy turns, confused. Every time I've tried to talk to you, Troy, you've dismissed me. It's been years, Maggie. We all have new lives. What can you possibly have to say to me at this point that would make any difference? They stare in silence for a moment. Well? Make a difference? No, but I need to say it anyway. For my sake. For closure. For satisfaction. For... Whatever. I'm the injured party here, Troy. Or did you forget that? You know, the gay thing, I can't say that deep down. I didn't always know. I lived with you. We did everything together. I knew you better than anyone. I'd have to be a fucking idiot to not know something wasn't right. But I was just a kid and I loved you. I loved you so much, but I just overlooked it. I overlooked it so much, the stupid, naive wife. I blamed myself for a long time for not noticing more, for not noticing sooner, for not questioning things, for, for just pretending and... Hell, Troy, I probably even forgave you at some point because I knew that's just who you all... Her eyes well up. She's shaken. But the lying, the behind my back shit, the cheating, especially the cheating, that's the thing that really gnawed at me. I couldn't shake it. I felt used, dirty. I felt betrayed. The fucking clueless doll sitting at home while you're off on some fake business trip doing God knows what with some random guys you met online. Troy's face has guilt and disbelief all over it. Yeah, I know. I know about all that. Some of the shit I found out about after you left made me sick to my stomach. That's what I just can't seem to get over. God knows you could have brought some home all sorts of diseases and shit, and the other people that knew what was going on and never said anything, I'm sure they looked at me and thought I was a fucking moron. You just wanted to have your secret life your way, no matter who or what got hurt. And the worst part is, you never even said you were sorry. You still haven't. He reaches over and puts his hand on her shoulder. Maggie. I never meant to hurt you. And I swear, I was always safe. Maggie pulls away. It's too late for that, Troy. I don't want your excuses. I didn't come back here for an explanation or even an apology. I came back so you would know what it was like for me. What it felt like. The years I wasted on you. Why I was so bitter. Why I never reached out. Why I felt so broken. 
When you left, your life became what you wanted it to be. Free to do what you want, people were even happy for you for being who you really were. But my life was in shambles. My whole future, everything I had envisioned suddenly disappeared. And then when I saw you earlier, for just a second I remembered some of the good times. And for a brief moment I thought, maybe, just maybe, it was time to let it all go. I swear I was just going to come over and say hello, but, but then I saw him and you put your arm around him, it, it all rushed back. It was like a punch to the gut, like you were rubbing it in my face. Look what I have now, isn't it wonderful? That honestly was not my intention. It doesn't matter. Really, it doesn't. There's a long pause as they stare at each other. The sound of traffic and Casey's phone playing music becomes more obvious in the stillness. The fact is, now I've said what I needed to say. Nothing really changes. I don't think I will ever totally forgive you. I don't even know if you care. But for my sake, it's time to forget. I just need to forget you. She wipes tears from her face and turns and just walks away. She takes Nolan's hand as they leave without looking back. Troy doesn't move. He doesn't turn to watch her walk away. He just stands motionless. Casey walks towards him and puts his arm around his shoulder. Troy is ashamed. Let's go home.